Welcome back to Monroe Live, everybody. This is a segment called Ask Monroe. We get a lot of questions that come in from our viewers on Twitter, in the, in the question feed for our YouTube videos. But what are we gonna cover today, Scott? So today, uh, we have an interesting topic. It centers around heat pumps, which I know are one of your favorite things to talk about. Uh, and it stems from some questions we got about some recent news, which was that Audi on the Q4 is going to be removing the heat pump uh, from the vehicle, so removing that capability from its thermal management system, uh, and they're claiming it's due to supply chain shortages, uh, and specifically chip shortages, the semiconductor stuff that we've been hearing. So um, in response to that, they're replacing that heat pump. They sent out an email to their customers that said, hey, the shortages is why we're getting rid of this feature. Um, we're going to replace it with a resistive heater. Don't worry, your vehicle will still perform great. Uh, and we're also going to credit you $1,000 back if you had bought this under the pretense that you were going to have a heat pump. So that's kind of the thing that sparked this. Uh, I think we have our own theories about it um, and, and whether or not there might be some other stuff going on there. But we're going to get into a little bit about what heat pumps are, talk about if we think this vehicle that we have has it. It was convenient. We happened to have a Q4 on hand that we had for just sort of doing other reviews on. So it was timely to ask this question. So we're excited to go through it today. And uh, yeah, we'll dive yeah. in. And you mentioned that heat pumps versus a traditional thermal system, heat pumps are typically more complicated. Mm -hmm. And some of the early OEMs that deployed heat pumps were the Nissan Leaf, the yep. Jaguar I-Pace. And when we opened the hoods of those vehicles, it was a wild mess of lines, typically aluminum lines, valves, mm -hmm. uh, ethylene glycol lines using refrigerant and pumps and, and valve blocks. And then when we saw Tesla come out with their Octo valve and super manifold. Mm -hmm. It was the first time we saw a real elegant integration of much of that. Yeah. And we can actually, Scott, we can show what this heat pump system looks like. So yeah. VW is really good about putting stuff online about what their system looks like. Mm -hmm. And we corroborated that. And <laughs> now Scott, explain what we see along the rail over here. Yeah. So if we come in uh, and look sort of in the passenger side of the engine bay here, you can see, well, and I might have you come around, Eric, but. Um, Along this bay rail here, you can see a bunch of different valve assemblies, those sort of white T-shaped things down in there. Corey, if you could point, awesome, thank you. So there's one, two, three, four, there's a fifth and a sixth right under that coolant bottle. And then there are two more towards the front of the engine bay here, uh, kind of down in that area. But you look at those, those valves are gonna be what's switching uh, to different areas of the cooling system that, if, it's funny, if you count it up, we talked about with Tesla, the octo valve, right? There happened to be eight. Well, coincidentally, there's also eight there. So speaking to kind of some of the integration, how we see different people execute heat pump systems, you can go with a really integrated approach or you can kind of have a scattershot approach where everything's living in different parts of the engine bay, which is more of what we're seeing here. So I guess at a high level first, the Q4 that we have here, this is a 2022. So this vehicle does have the heat pump. Um, this vehicle rides on the MEB platform, so it's shared with the ID4. We know on the ID4, they had an option for either with a heat pump and without. It was something they charged about a thousand bucks for. Um, so this vehicle, we're pretty confident based on the presence of those valves, the size of the, um, the, the EAC compressor. Um, we're pretty confident that this vehicle is heat pump equipped. But again, if, we, if you were to go buy a Q4 these days, apparently it's not gonna have it. Yeah. and. The, the main purpose for having a heat pump on an EV is that it's more efficient at converting that electrical energy to heat. Mm -hmm. And that's very well documented uh, compared to a resistive heating element. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why this is not really an issue with internal combustion engine vehicles is because there's so much waste heat in the internal combustion engine cycle. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around 70, 80% is lost to heat and vibration. Yep. So when you heat your vehicle, if you have a gasoline engine or even a diesel engine, mm -hmm that waste heat is actually captured to heat heat the vehicle. It's and like the one time it's an advantage yeah, to have it's an waste advantage. heat, right? <laughs> and that's why in really cold scenarios, a heat pump is typically an advantage. And this is where VW got in kind of a little bit of snafu. They spent all this extra money putting yeah. the heat pump in, charged the customer more, yeah. and it wasn't quite realizing the advantage. Yeah, for sure. So. Like you said, um, the reason to put a heat pump in an EV, it's all about reducing cold weather based range degradation, right? So when it's colder outside, EVs are known to lose maybe as much as 30% of their range when you're running the heater, a resistive heater. Hi everyone. I normally am not a fan of buttons, but when I need a button, I like the sexy buttons from Enhanced. <laughs> Thank you. 
This video is sponsored by Enhance and their sexy Tesla buttons. They develop accessories for your Tesla vehicle which aim to improve your driving experience. Their products are easy to install with DIY step-by-step -step guides, they don't violate your warranty, and they're safe to be used on the road in any situation. Make the smart choice and enhance your Tesla today with sexy buttons. Uh, we know Tesla and others, when they've put heat pumps in, they've shown that the, that's decreased by about a third, that range loss. And that makes sense because when you're talking about heat pumps versus resistive heaters, the difference in the coefficient of performance is about 1.0 with a resistive heater, 3.0, with a, with a heat pump system. So it's just a more efficient means of heating. It's basically working like an AC system in reverse to pull heat energy out of the air and use that to productively warm the vehicle. However, you're gonna, like you said, it gets a little bit more complex. You're gonna spend some more money. So it only makes sense to do that if in fact you're gonna realize that performance benefit. And unfortunately, when VW rolled out the heat pump as the option on the ID4, they got a lot of complaints from customers to the extent that, you know, and even on YouTube, you guys could go look, there's people that compare, hey, I have an ID4 with one, I have it without one, and they would do the same run on the same day and show that there really wasn't a meaningful difference in performance. And as a result of that, VW kind of got called out, they had to refund customers, and they basically had to admit that the performance claims of their heat pump were exaggerated. So, when that brings us back to the Q4, which had the heat pump as standard, and since we know this is basically kind of a rebadged ID4, basically I think Audi got to the point, and obviously Audi and VW, same company, same ownership, they probably realized that they had an underperforming uh, system that was adding cost, adding complexity, um, and they just decided at some point, hey, let's just get rid of this thing. It'll be able to lower the cost of the vehicle for them, make it a little more accessible. So. I I don't know. I hear them saying that's because of supply chain shortages, but if you're asking my opinion, I think that that was just probably a convenient excuse. At this point, you know, 2020, 2021, chip shortages, that was legitimate. We know a lot of companies struggled with that and it did limit production, but largely we're pretty much past that. And there are those that would argue that we're actually in a, in a, a chip surplus at this point too. I agree with that. So I think this is just a clever spin by the marketing department to try and quietly remove a feature that was underperforming. I don't know. What do you think? I agree with you. So <laughs> Scott put a ton of effort into researching this. I'm just here to bounce questions back and forth off of Scott. So thanks for digging into this one. It's really what we do here at Monroe & Associates. We try and actually make sense of what we see, well, not only in the news, but what we see when the vehicles roll into this facility. We have the luxury of seeing how many EVs in the past two years, probably like- Several dozen at least. 30, yeah. 30 yeah. or 30 plus. Pretty much and, everything that's on the road, fortunately. And again, we're lucky to be able to do it, but we do have a chance to see most and see them either if we're tearing them down or at the very least of some sort of a press car. It's, it's awesome to be able to have that exposure. Yeah. So I love doing these Ask Monroe segments because we're able to kind of get a, a quick feedback loop to our viewers. So mm -hmm. th thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate it. Have a nice day. Yep.